Atomic Mass Games are releasing Star Wars Shatterpoint. This is a skimrish miniature game. And this here is the core box. You get terrain in here. You get 16 awesome miniatures in here. And in this video, I am going to paint them all. And I am going to paint them using Army Painter's Speed Paint. So the process when I'm gonna do this is that first I will need to mount these together because they are not put together when you get them. So I will need to build the terrain and I will need to build the miniatures as well. Then I would need to prime them because you need to prime everything you have to paint. After that I will paint the minis and the terrain. Since I'm painting the miniatures with the speed hay paint here I will not need to wash them but I will need to wash the terrain because I am not going to use these colors on the terrain, on them I am going to use just some normal colors. So once I have painted the minis, painted the terrain and washed the terrain, I will also need to varnish everything. So they last for years to come. But first, let's start to mount these miniatures and the terrain together. So now I have assembled a few of these miniatures. I have done eight of them, so I'm halfway there. And I've been doing this for like 40 minutes, so it's not that bad, it won't take that long time. But when you see these little pieces of plastic here, it might be quite scary for you if this is the first time you're doing it. But it's actually not that hard. And I know this looks like a jungle, right? Which piece goes where, it's really hard to see. But there is actually a really, really good assembling guide in on Atomic Games website that you can use where they go step by step how to put together each of these little miniatures here. And really all you need is some glue. I use Loctile's glue here. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just think that their glue works quite great. And then I have one of these clippers here. This one is Army Painter's Clipper, but you can of course use any clipper you would like to. You could also just use a normal scissor or maybe a nail clipper. Because the thing is, you really need to get really, really close into the piece that you are trying to cut out. And as you can see, this clipper here is actually bended in one way. Meaning that I can quite easily push this clipper up as close to the miniature as I need to and then just clip it off. It's quite quite simple and it goes quite fast. And I strongly suggest that you only clip out the pieces that you are going to glue together for the moment. Meaning that don't clip out entire piece of figure here and then trying to figure out which piece went to which piece. No, just follow the instructions, clip out the pieces, glue them together and go to the next part of the miniature. On these bruises here, you can see small little letters and a number next to them. These refers to the piece that you are going to cut out. So when the instruction tells you to cut out L18, well then you cut out the one next to that letter and that number. And then you simply put them together as the instruction says. And you don't need that much glue to get the pieces to stick together. You just take a little, little, little dip of glue put the pieces on, hold them together, and they will stick quite good. And these miniatures are excellent miniatures for beginners because they are easy, easy assembly. There are really no question on how the pieces fit together as there's really just one way for them to go in. And if you use the assembly guide, cut out one piece at a time, well, you really can't do anything wrong here. Now I'm starting to glue together the little buildings here and just like the miniatures you really just go along with the instructions, cut out the little piece you need and glue them together. It is really really easy. However, these minis right here were quite a struggle for me. There were a lot of small pieces on them. The legs and arms were really really small and with my big clumsy fingers, well, this was a little bit of a challenge actually. However, I got them together, I got them ready to go, and now I just need to assemble the last buildings. 
I have mounted together all of the buildings but also the miniatures and I am getting ready to prime them. I am actually going to prime them with Army Painter's Barbarian Skin here. I didn't really have the shade that these buildings have on the pictures so I'm gonna go with this primer and I'm just gonna try to fix out the shade afterwards. But on the steel constructions here I am going to spray them with some metallic spray right away because well it just makes sense and will save me just a bunch of time. I will need to secure these buildings on the surface with some sticky sticky things and then spray them and let them dry. So now I have primed the buildings here and as you can see I have already spray painted some of the pieces with metallic paint. And this is just to make my life a little bit easier when I am going to paint the whole building because now some pieces of the buildings are already painted in the color I want to. Now I can just fix the details later. So the minis have now been primed and we are ready to start painting. But what do you need to paint? Well, of course you would need some brushes. And I have a bunch of different size brushes here. I have thick ones, I have small ones, and you probably need a couple of these just to be able to get the miniature just the way you want to. But I will probably use this one here the most. Now I don't know if you can see it because the camera won't show it, but here, and this is actually quite a thick brush, but that's because I am using Army Painters Speed Paint. This is like a quick fix solution. It's called Speed Paints for a reason, right? And in here you have the whole thing. This is a one coat cover, meaning that you don't need to wash them afterwards. Once you have done one layer, you are pretty much ready to go and start to play your game and therefore you might need just a little bit bigger brush because this paint will need just a little bit more paint on the brush to actually get it out there and make it run as it should run on the mini. But besides the paint and the brushes, I also have a little palette. I have some water here for cleaning my brush, some paper for those mistakes, but I also have a handle here. And this handle is pretty handy to have because in this case you can just put in the mini here and you don't need to hold it in your hands. This will make it a lot more easier to twist and turn the miniature around. And it won't fall off, it just sticks right on there, which is quite great. But the miniatures that I want to start painting are these big boys right here. And my handle is too small for this one, so this one I will need to hold in my hand. And these ones were quite a struggle to put together actually. All the other things, let's say that I spend the maybe about four hours to mount the whole set together. The miniatures, the terrain and everything. So it's not that bad. But these ones were quite hard. And if you do not have the right glue when you are mounting these together, well, you are in for some struggle. But never mind, let's start painting. When I paint my miniature, I want them to look as much as the game intended them to look as possible. You can of course paint them any way you want to. If you want these to be purple, well paint them purple, who cares? But in this case here, I want them to look as the game intended to. And on this game we have beautiful, beautiful artwork of the minis all around the bottom of the box. Which means that it will be quite easy for me to figure out which paint to use. And on these droids here, I think I'm going to start with the sand golem. Now before we start to paint we need to give these a good good shake. You need to shake them pretty much until your arm hurts a little bit. But as you can hear there is a little little iron ball in this one making the job a little bit more easy. As we can see on these droids here, well they are mainly brown. Their shoulders are a little bit red and then of course the base is another color. So on these fellows here I will go, so on these guys here I will go with the sand golem color. Now this here I think will represent their color quite good because they kind of have a sandish brown color. So now I'm gonna dip my pencil down in the paint but I won't dip the whole brush. Just the tip of it because if you dip the whole brush in the paint well you will pretty much ruin your pencil. And now I will just start from the top going down. So as you can see I start from the top one and then I go down on the miniature. This is because the wash in this paint will run down on the mini and cover all the little 
spaces it needs to cover and you can pretty much see the wash here I mean you can see the black little spots here in the paint that is the wash doing its job and I will cover this whole miniature in this shade as this miniature is this shade except the weapon because the weapon was black now when you paint small details with a bigger brush you simply just use the little little tip here on that brush and as you can see the paint pretty much does the job for me it runs into all the little nooks and crannies here on the miniature so i have covered the first miniature in the sand golem shade this took me about like three four minutes maybe it went quite quite fast but also this miniature was really easy to paint now i will let this one dry before i go on and do the little red pattern here on the shoulders but i have one more of these and since I already have that paint on my brush, well, I'm going to keep on going the same color on this miniature as well. And I will just do the same thing. Go from the top and going down on the miniature. Let the little paint run in where it should run in and just let it do its magic, really. So I have covered these minis completely now with the sand golden color. And I think this color worked quite well. I mean, it is a little bit weird color on them because it's like light brown or something, but I think this one did the trick. Now, before you move on from this mini, give yourself the time to just look at all the little angles on the miniatures to make sure that you actually got all the pieces because it is just a pain in the ass if you move on to another color and then at the end you see that you oh man I missed a little spot here then you need to go back again and new brushes <gasps> oh my god no it's better to just make sure that they are already done when you feel like they are done and take a good look at them next I will move on to this cool cool warrior right here now her dress on the picture is like it's like blue purple-ish so I am going to use the high lord blue on her so this miniature is of course not purple blue on the face and on the hands but the clothes are I will start at the highest point on her dress and paint up going down once I've done with all the blue spots I will go on with her face and so on so here we have the dress and this is one coverage that is pretty damn awesome I will probably not need to do anything more on this skirt I mean that paint just really does the job for you you really just need to stick within the edges of whatever you are painting and then the paint will do the rest that was the blue parts on this warrior right here and now I'm going to do the white parts and I think on the white parts I am going to use where is it the holy white here and I am pretty much just going to take her face and the arm because she got like bandages around here and she got bandages around her stomach. And I am going to take the holy white and paint her with that. Shaky shaky! So that was the white-ish skin color and uh, wraps around the arms. Now I'm going to paint her little, uh, little belt she has here on her skirt as well. And I'm going to use the hardened leather. And then I'm going to let that dry, and once it had dried, I will then paint the gold details on that. And that was another figure down. Like I said, I will need to go back on this one just to do the gold here on her little whatever it is she has on her skirt. Uh, now I'm going to go on to Dark Maul and paint him as well. Now if we look at his picture, we can see that he has mostly black. But he is, of course, red in the face as well. So I think I'm gonna start with the red in the face and then move on to the black. The black details have been painted on this bad, bad warrior. But I'm going to wait with the red until the black have dried a little bit more. So now I am going to go on and paint his clothes using Grave Lord Grey. Next we have his little pants uh, underneath his uh, his cloak or whatever it is. I'm going to paint that in Maligant Green, the speed paint again. And then his boots, I have painted them in just... Here I actually took some shotgun metal from the zombie side set, again from Army Painter. I usually use Army Painter the most because, well, I just like their paints. And I think that they do the trick for what I want. I mean, I'm not a master painter. I'm not educated in any way in this. I simply do what I feel like feels the right for that miniature that I'm painting. 
and army painter have a lot of paints that actually helps beginner painters like me I have painted a lot of miniatures don't get me wrong but I still feel like a beginner so now the pants and everything are done I ju I'm just missing like the red pieces in his face now but I painted the black first remember and then I went on with the clothes and boots and so on so now the face is actually ready to be covered and I think I mean I have two different choices here I have the blood red and then I have the slaughter red I think I think I'm going for slaughter red it's definitely slaughter red here I have to shift the pencil because the details in his face is really really small. So I'm gonna use just a little bit more pointy brush here to get the uh, well the red color in his face, but also on his chest because it's red on his chest as well. Here goes nothing. There we go. I have managed to paint one more mini. But as you can see, of course, his light sword needs to be painted as well. I just don't really know what color to choose on that light sword. I mean, red doesn't really do it, right? But I think I have to go with red and then maybe just do some highlights later on. I will do that. I will go with red and then I do highlights later on. But I'm not gonna take uh, the slaughter red here. I'm gonna do the blood red on this one instead because it's just a little bit more lighter red instead. Yeah, well, quite okay, right? Next up, I'm getting ready to fix Mr. Gar Saxon here. Again, he has a lot of black on his clothes, but also some red details. But just like Mr. Maul here, I will paint the black first, and then I will go on with the red details later. I think I'm going to use the Grim Black on the Grim Grim Warrior. So I actually ended up painting these uh, Mandalorian Super Commando soldiers completely black because, well, they are black on the pictures and they have some red details. So I have painted everything that should be black, black, but I have left out the parts that should be red. As the black here, I used the grim black here, which is really, really black actually. I mean, it says grim black and it does not let you down on that part. So now I'm going to paint the red play pieces on these little miniatures here and I am going to use the slaughter red. There I have painted the red little details here on these fellas now. I will probably need to just go back and refill some of them as they got quite dark. But when you do these small 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 details here it is better that you have painted the bottom layer first. Because then when you paint the details on top of that layer, you can pretty much just put your brush on them and then just let it go straight over without pushing down in any of the edges. Just take what you need to take. I feel quite happy about these. Next thing I'm going to paint here is the smoke on these uh, fellas and women. You don't really know because you have masks, right? But I know there's some men and women in here. So I'm going to paint the smoke here on the back side and I'm going to use the holy white. I Think. I don't really know I'm, I'm not that good at smoke at fire so I think I'm just gonna paint this holy white and uh, hopefully this one will help me out so again here I use the bigger brush I just dip the tip in and I simply go from the top of the smoke going down and there are really nothing I can do wrong here I think I mean it's just smoke coming out from his little jetpack here right so just go from the upside going down and just cover the smoke completely. Like I said, I'm not that good. Smoke and fire is not my strong sides. Not that I have any strong sides when it comes to miniature painting. I mean, I know the basics and that's it. But for me, it's all about getting them tabletop ready. I mean, I think anything would look better than to just have them like this. Even if they're poorly painted, it's still better than just the gray pieces, right? At least that's my opinion. There I have covered the first f uh, smoke here with some uh, holy white. I think I'm just gonna let this dry and see how it went out and how it became. And then we're gonna take it from there. Didn't look like it covered the, the primer too good. So maybe I will need to go back and do like another one. But now we're going on with the next one here. So that was the smoke. Like I said, I 
don't think it covered the primer that good actually so I might need to go back and just fix that once it have dried but now I'm going to do the fire here and here I actually have one that is called fire giant orange so I'm thinking that must be perfect for fire right let's try that out shake it real good shake it real good shake 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 so this one really did look like fire I mean look at this I'm quite satisfied with that but as you can see the, the smoke down here, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. But the fire, man, that did the trick. Next up, I'm gonna paint Kalani. This one got quite a weird greenish color. It's not really green, it's like greenish. So I got this uh, plasmatic bolt, but I also have orc skin. But I think I'm going with the plasmatic bolt because, well, I have never used it, so I want to use it. And it feels like something a robot could have, right? Plasmatic bolt color. So that was almost Kalani here. I just have her little feet left. I say her, but I have no idea. I mean, this might be a guy. I have no idea. But Kalani sounds like a girl, so that's what I'm going to say. I don't really know that much about this character, actually. Do you? But uh, I have almost painted the whole thing here. I'm just going to go back and do, again, the metal details with some metal color. I don't have a metal color in my speed range uh, because there were no metal shade in the Mega set. Maybe there is one speed paint metal, I don't know, I haven't seen it then. But I am again going to use the, the shotgun over here to uh, from the Zombicide set again to get those details, get that metallic look. So that was Kalani, also quite simple to, to paint. I mean, you have the base color on her hair, which in this case I choose the plasmatic bolt here. So that was the base, and then I just simply covered the other details in between her joints with, uh, with the shotgun metal here, just to get her a little bit metallic look. You can see here, I hope. Again, I don't know if I need to go back later and just refill the plasmatic bolt because some parts it just felt like it didn't really cover it that good. But maybe it looks much better when it had dried. I mean, this is still quite wet. So I'm gonna put that aside. And now I feel like I have painted many minutes today. I've painted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've painted eight minutes just today. And my back is starting to hurt a little bit. So my shoulders are aching and I feel like I need some fresh air. But this have not taken that long. It's taken me I've been here for two and a half hours, I think, approximately. But I'm also filming, I'm shooting, and a lot of these minis were quite easy to paint. There were not that much details on them, which I really like. I mean, I just want them to be tabletop ready. I am not a precision painter. I don't want many, many small details like pockets and bags and whatever. I just want them to look good on the tables. For me, this is just the perfect miniatures. But now I'm putting down the brush and I'm gonna go out for a walk. Another day of painting minis, but today I have these white ones, the ones I primed with the white primer from Army Painter. And these are Stormtroopers, so they are mostly just white. So I don't think that they will take that long. And I'm actually, I'm halfway there. So we are getting there. And this is actually quite a fast process. I mean, I have not spent that many hours. But after these minis here, I also have the terrain, so I'm not really halfway, but I'm halfway with the minis. Before I go on with the, the next minis here, I need to redo the smoke on this fella right here, because that one just did not cover the smoke the way I wanted to. I mean, you can see the primer right through. So I think I will just have to go one more layer on this one to just make it look more like smoke actually and I will again go with the holy white and just have another go at it I think that if I do it one more time nah, it's gonna get there I think so I actually had one more of the ones that were not white left and this is the master Anakin Skywalker now if we look at his picture we can see that his cloak is kind of purpley ish brown ish and his boots are leather and his pants are brown so I will go with on his boots, I will go with the hardened leather here. And on his pants, I think I will go with sand golem, actually. I think that will be a good one. It's kind of light brown, so that will be good. And on his cloak, I will go for the high dweller purple. This one will probably be more purple than it is on the picture, but it will also be 
quite cool, right? So I'm going to start to paint his little cloak here. These pictures on the box are really, really helpful. I mean, they help so much to see how they are supposed to look. So I would strongly recommend you to simply just look at the box because it's really great. So when there are places that I need to be extra stable on my hand, I usually put the miniature toward the surface of the table and push my arms into the side of my body and really just try to focus as much as I can on what I'm doing. On this one here I should have painted the bottom layer first. So now I need to be more careful when I paint the bottom layer because it is simply more easier to paint the bottom first and then paint whatever is above as then you can just put the brush on them and just stroke over without touching the bottom. But hey, you know what? I'm just gonna make it work, it's okay. And why this mistake happened is because I just did not look at the mini before I started to paint. I thought that his entire upper body was this cloak, which is was not. He actually has a shirt underneath. This is why it's really important for you to get a good look at the miniature before you start painting. But that's the way we learn, right? And you know what? No matter how many times you will do this, you will end up making mistakes sooner or later. That was the purple layer on Mr. Anakin. Now I'm going to go with what I should have done from the start, going with the bottom layer, the brown layer. And I am going to go with Sand Golem, this one right here, on his pants and on his uh, little shirt here. And then we go with hardened leather on the boots. Makes sense, right? I mean, this guy probably had pretty hard leather. Hardcore. On the brown parts here, I am going to go with just a little bit smaller brush here since I messed up from the start. So now I need to really just put my hands into the side, keep this little fella really, really, really on his feet and gently, gently, gently brush his bottom parts. And if you have a cat in your home, it's quite important that you make a space for them on the table while you are painting, because they need to be a part of this cool little hobby, right? Just look at Tiger here, he is so indulged in this. He wants to know what I'm doing and why shouldn't he let them join? So that was the hardened leather as well. I am almost done with all of the little hardened leather pieces here. And now he has some metal details on his belt buckle, but also on his arms. And again, I am going with the shotgun metal here. Because, well, as I told you before, I, I just don't have any metal color in the speed paint range. But let's do this. This will go really quick. So that was Mr. Anakin Skywalker. Now I won't do the eyes just yet because I want to go back and do the bases and the eyes on the miniatures at the same time. Now I simply just want to get the body finished. But this is Anakin and I, I, I'm actually quite satisfied with this one. I think they turned out quite great. Now I will go on with the clone troopers here. These ones will not take that much time. I mean, they are basically just white. They have a little bit black in like between the, the legs and the upper body. But besides that, it's really just to paint the weapons black and then just put on some blue under armor here. I will probably just refill the white parts just a little bit to, to make the white just a little bit more filled in. But other than that, these ones will be quite fast. So I have filled in the dark little spots here and I'm going to go with the blue parts here. Again, this should go really fast because there are not that many blue spots on these. We have a little bit on the helmet and a little bit on the armor and that's pretty much it. Uh, on these ones I'm going with the magic blue. Yeah, sounds like magic, right? So it probably will be quite great. What is that thing up on the sky? It's so bright, I'm not used to seeing that. It must be the sun they're talking about. We never see that in Sweden. I think I'm gonna sit outside and paint. I just finished Bo-Katan here, which was quite easy as well. I mean, mostly it was black, some metal paint and a bunch of blue paint. So this one wasn't that bad either. I am just going to keep on finishing these miniatures. I do not have that many left now, so I am quite excited to get finished now. I am down to my last miniature, Mrs. Ashoka. I am going to paint her with magic blue and uh, 
well some shotgun metal believe me or not and if you can see I mean she has some patterns in her face these are quite hard to get right but they have actually helped us on the miniatures because you can see the fields where the color is supposed to be so it's going to be a little bit easier for me to paint her face but will probably be a little bit hard as well I will actually start with her skin color first because that is the bottom layer Ashuka Ashuka is done well I haven't done the base and I haven't done the face either but the paint in her face need to dry before I can go in there and do those details and this is never easy. To do those small details on a, such a small miniature, it's gonna be hard. For the bases, I am not going to use my expensive miniature paint here, and I am not going to use my small brushes here either, because I don't want to disturb them. No, I will simply use a little bit cheaper paint here, and I will also use a cheaper, bigger brush, because it makes sense. There's a lot of space here to cover, and I will simply just push down the brush and just stroke it out. Quite, quite easy. I mean, I don't want to do too many details here on the bases. I don't want to spend too much time making the bases. So as you can see here, this is quite a fast process. The only thing you should watch out here when you paint the bases, of course, is the feet on the character, because you don't want them to become all gray. It makes no sense. It's like stuck in the ground or something. No, they're not. So mind the feet and just put down the brush and wipe out the paint. It's quite easy. There, I have finished the bases as well. So now I have mounted them together, I have primed them, I have painted them with the speed paints, which is a one coat solution. So I do not need to wash them now, or I should not wash them now, remember? And all I have to do now really is to put some varnish on them. Now varnish is kind of like a protective layer that will protect these miniatures for well, a couple of years at least, depending on how much you use them, of course. You will wear them down sooner or later, but the varnish will protect them a lot. Now, when you use varnish, just as when you use the primers, you should be outside in a ventilated area. You should shake the bottle really, really well, and you should spray them with 30 centimeters of distance to the mini or the terrain, because I am going to varnish the terrain as well. Well, once I have done the terrain, that is, because now I need to paint the terrain. Summer is in Sweden. It's such a beautiful weather today that I am going to paint outdoors. And I am going to paint all the terrain now. I have it all set up here behind me. I am probably not going to put down that much work on these buildings. I just want to get the tabletop ready, but they will still look good. Just believe me. So I'm going to sit down here now in this beautiful weather under the shade of course, I'm from Sweden, like can't take sun, and paint some buildings. So when I paint the terrain, I do not use my fine brushes because it will pretty much get ruined and there's so much surface here, so to use that little little brush, that would take forever. No, here I am using a cheaper, bigger brush to simply just brush on these buildings. And I do not use expensive miniature paint either, I just use regular paint. And I think this one will do the job. This is pretty much the color I was looking for. And as you can see, I've already spray painted the silver parts on the buildings. So I do not need to do them as well. And if they don't turn out perfect, these buildings, well, don't worry. This is supposed to look a little bit worn down. Like people have been fighting here. Like they've been going on battle. They've been out here in weather for years. So I am also going to wash these buildings once I have painted them and once they have dried. But for now, I'm just going to take this paint, the big brush, and just get them going. So as you can see here, I simply just brush the paint on the building itself. One thing to keep in mind here is to try to make even strokes so there won't be like a lot of brush moves on the buildings because that would look weird. Simply just draw from the top and go down, smooth, simple strokes. I mean, this part here have taken me a minute, maybe. And now I of course try not to paint the doors because I want to paint them in metallic paint after. And I am done with this color. Now I'm going to go on and paint the silver details on the buildings that I 
didn't really manage to spray on. And again, here I just use one of the cheap silver paints. I don't want to spend too much money on this. When I've painted all the metal, I will also just paint these little lights here that are on the sides of the building. And here I am actually using Slaughter Red from Army Paint here. And as I'm using miniature paint, and this is a little bit more detail, I use my miniature paint brush just to get them the way I want to. There we got the red little lights as well, looking cool, blinking red, being danger, danger. As you can see, the metal paint I had was not that thick and it actually did not cover the primer that good. But I don't mind, I thought that was a little bit cool actually, I'm probably gonna keep that. Otherwise you could of course paint this over one more time if you really want the metal effect, but I, I think I'm gonna keep it like this. The buildings are now painted and I feel quite satisfied about them. Unlike the miniatures, I will wash the buildings because I don't want them to look in mint condition, right? I want them to look old and worn down. So I am going to use this big bottle here from the Army Painter and this is the Quick Shade Strong Tone. But Usually you will dip a miniature down in this one and shake it off, but I can't dip these buildings. So I would just need to take a big brush and simply just paint on this wash on the buildings and I will cover everything. But now I have taken a little hardboard here just to protect the table because this will stick on everything it hits. And just like before, I will start from the top and I will go down with the wash. So it will look like they have run down on the buildings. And it will also lay in these little nooks and crannies here like it will look like it's a shadow. So let's just get started with this. I love doing washes. The strong tone wash here, I did not shake. I merely took some kind of stick, put it down there and scrolled it around. But now when it looks like this is all brown, we are ready to go. And I take my pretty big brush here and I simply wipe on the wash. And I need to cover everything on this one, really, really drown it in wash. So let's just get going. That was the first one. This went really, really fast. Now when you do this, make sure you cover the entire piece. Because if you miss a piece now, it will look weird. And if you get too much on any of the edges or anything, you simply take a piece of paper and wipe it off, or a dry brush and just suck up the extra amount and just wipe it out somewhere else. Washed and ready to be used. Well, no, not quite yet. They need to dry and they need to dry quite a while. 24, 48 hours at least make them really, really dry because they will be sticky. Once they have dried, it's time for us to varnish them. And once we have varnished them, we are ready to start playing. I am done with this set. Well, I'm not done with it. I haven't even started playing it, but I am done putting it together. I am done with the priming. I am done with the painting. I've done the washes. I have done the varnish. So now they are ready to start playing. Will these miniatures win any prizes? No, they won't. Are they perfectly painted? No, they're not. There are probably a few little mistakes on them, but are they tabletop ready? Yes. Yes, they are. They are ready to get out on the table and start playing. And I haven't tested this game yet because I really want to paint the miniatures and the buildings and everything before I start to play the game. So I get that right feel from the start. Now, like I said before, I am no miniature expert. I'm not really a miniature painter. This is really a side hobby for me where I sit down and just enjoy myself by painting these small little miniatures here. Which is why I use the Army Painter set, because they have a lot of time-saving hacks, but also hacks for us amateurs that just want it to look good on the table. The speed paints really shorten down your amount of time. This is a one coat solution, I had to do nothing afterwards. Of course I could do more. I could do highlights, I could do all of the little shading effects if I wanted to, but I feel like I just want to get it on the table and I want it to look good, which is dots. Also, if you use the primers that are already the right skin color or color for the miniatures here, well, you can skip that step as well because it's already done for you. Of course, I did do some washes on the building, but that's just because I really wanted this worn down feeling and I didn't want it to look like the buildings were in mint condition. I wanted them to look a little bit dirty. I wanted them to look like they have been out in this environment for quite a bit and the washes just did that. 
So if you want your miniatures to look good with not putting down too much time and effort and not having to worry about you being like a beginner or whatever, I can strongly recommend to check out the Army Painter. And I would almost say that using the normal paints and not the speed paints will help you a bit more if you are new. Because the speed paints you do not wash. So if you make any mistakes while you have used the speed paints and you do not notice them, well, there's really no going back after you have varnished them. But if you use the normal paints and then you wash your minis, the wash will cover all the mistakes. It will take you a little bit more time and it will have an extra step in your process, but as a beginner you will probably make some mistakes. And the miniature wash is really the miniature painter's auto-tune. It just erases those mistakes for you. So that's just a little tip. But there you have it. That was the process. That was the video. I will of course do a how to play video on this beautiful game as well. But first I need to play it a little bit. If you enjoyed the video here, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you enjoy my other videos, well please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot and it really gives me a smile on my lips every time I get a new subscriber. It really does. But most importantly, until next time people, please do not forget to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out.